With the past month or so having a sail in the high seas with moon keys and spending time in our new libraries, we have had to neglect our garden a wee bit, and our journey through all the fruits and veggies of Don't Stop Together has slowed because of it. But today, today we return to just that, and we're coming in hot and spicy with peppers, folks. From tongue-twisting treats to a whole lot of red, best be prepared to come out of all this quite dead. No, seriously, while peppers may end up boosting our own damages soon enough, they can also damage us rather effectively right flippin' now. Out of every raw fruit or veggie in this game, it is very hard to come across another that will instantly drain 20 health and 15 sanity per bite, and while cooking the things will help mitigate those losses a bit, an accidental misclick still won't be pretty. So don't misclick. You should still click some peppers into a crock pot, however, as proper cooking avenues are where they start to make their name. Now. Stuffed pepper poppers are not the greatest things to pop into our mouths at the end of the day, but they are pretty cheap if you do have some peppers left over, and 25 hunger, 30 health, and minus 5 sanity is not too shabby. Plus, eat them fast enough, and you'll get a decent temperature boost to boot. But if we're truly talking the truly hot stuff, then next to nothing can compare to hot dragon chili salad. The dishes will require both a Wadley specifically, and a dragon fruit too, as you can see, but their temperature mechanics can combat the winds of winter better than most anything out there with a single bite. Hot dragon chili salads are not foods that you just eat for the sake of eating, especially given the stats were stored, of course. So make notes all around. Oh, but it's time, everyone. Chili Flakes time. If anything is going to separate peppers from the rest of the pack, it's going to be the pack of spices that packs a punch. Every use of Warley's portable grinding mill will produce three spices, and these spices can then be sprinkled onto just about every crockpot dish in this game to do two things. Make said dishes actually spicy, meaning they will have some of them temperature mechanics to them all now, while also having said foodies, increase our damages by 20% if we stuff them in our face. Now that's the big one. Any spice food now makes you 20% stronger for half a day. However, there's also some other dishes out there that do the very same thing in their own right. So here's where some synergies come into play. And honestly, some of them are bonkers insane. Spice up the whole team and nothing, not a thing, will stand a chance. Have fun. So yeah, I think we can all agree, peppers are pretty freaking good. But how do we go about getting some? Well, a couple ways actually. However, most of us will have to grow our own via random seeds. We will have a 2.7% chance to do so in autumn, a 1.7% chance in winter, which is already quite low, mind you, a 1.3% chance in spring, which is actually the lowest chance for any plant in this entire game, and finally, a whopping 3.2% chance come summer. Now, believe it or not, even with such low chances, autumn and summer are a pepper's preferred seasons. But I'll be honest, we've got some terrible odds for these things all around. So thankfully, farming is not our only option at the end of the day. Not when there's a Merm King in play. The green guy has a chance to drop specific crop seeds for peppers, durians, pumpkins, onions, eggplants, and even garlic. So if luck is on our side, a pepper plot may not be too far behind. But yes, as I said before, farming will still be the gateway to exactly that for the majority of people out there. So once you do start growing a couple peppers, be sure to plan ahead, especially with how rare they might be. You can feed what you grow to a bird in the birdcage to help collect additional pepper seeds specifically, or you can tend to a pepper plant so well that later on, you're going to produce a giant crop, or just a crop that's going to drop a crop seed or two when harvested. But whatever the case may be, you're probably still going to want to know what a pepper plant actually looks like, so go ahead and pause the video and take a gander here. But hold up, beard. The farming in this game still hurts my brain after 
all these years. How do we even do it effectively? Well, with watering, fertilizing, and tending. That's how. And for us here today, we will be needing lots of manure fertilizer, as that is exactly what a pepper plant eats per cycle of growth. But where will manure fertilizer actually be coming from, you ask? Easy. Manure itself, buckets of poop, and guano. In fact, manure is likely the simplest of fertilizer there is in this game. That said, let us not forget about the three-in-one fertilizer options of tree jam, glomer goop, and compost wraps either, especially the latter, as it happens to be the best fertilizer in the entire game. Bring it all together though, to help feed your farm plots and reap what you sow. Namely, the extra crop seeds to go along with your hammer giant produce. But as always, do not concern yourself too much about all of this. Even caring for your plants at the lowest levels possible can still have you ending up with the crop itself alongside a seed or two as long as the seasons match. But all that said, however, there is also the prospect of crop combinations to help blow it all out of the water. At least the fertilizer side of the conversation, that is. Self-feeding farms are possible with practically every single fruit or veggie in this game, and Peppers here has some really good ones at that. Combining toma roots, garlic even, onions, you name it. Learn more here, though, as it's a bit too much to get into right here. And there you have it, everyone. A spicy return to crop guides for Don't Start Together here. It's been a long Long while, so I do hope I didn't miss anything too obvious or messed up the format in any way, but I believe we flaked off the rust just fine. With this behind us, we are nearing the end of our garden tour for sure, and while I said I wasn't going to be making a guide on every single one of the damn things, it's looking like I'm going to make a guide on every single one of the damn things. And you know what? That's alright, because even out of the remaining three or four, about half of them are definitely worth the chore. But thanks for watching, folks. Well, wish it to all. Pop them peppers. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.